I've only made it through a little bit of this book, so I'm actually curious what his take is on this one, because this is something that I'm, I'm very curious about. There are plenty of books about Golang, like for any other language, and most of them about learning Go, like beginner stuff. And when it comes to that, I'm pretty sure there are a bunch of uh, good ones, but what I read and what I covered is a book. By the way, beginner programmer books are kind of crazy. Can I just throw that out there? Can I just throw it out there that beginner programmer books kind of crazy? Explain. There's two types of beginner programmer books. One, there's I have never programmed. Teach me what programming is and how it works. Now, that's probably better done through a series of exercises and guided course. Right? And then there's number two type of beginner programming books. Intro into Golang. And I just have to ask, why? Why would you buy an intro into Golang? Why would you buy an intro into anything when they're just simply available? Now, there's there's like how to use Go the most canonical way, right? That's good. Like th that could be a book you'd want to read because you're like, hey, I can learn to program. That's not even hard. Like, I'll go build a server for two days and figure that shit out pretty easily. But now it's like more I need to figure out how do I write Go code that looks like other people's Go code? How do I do this so that I understand what people generally think about? What are the best ways to write Go code? Because I'm new to it, and I'm just going to write a bunch of crap because I don't know what I'm doing. Like, give me a book on wisdom. Don't give me a book on how to write an if statement in a programming language. You can literally look that up. Okay, it is available. Copilot will write it for you. ChatGPT will write it for you. The internet has thousands of copies of it. Just go and look it up, right? It's just so silly to buy a book to teach you to write an if statement or a function or a struct. Like there's plenty, like that content is freely available everywhere. You want to, you want to buy a book for wisdom. You don't want to buy a book for intellect, if that makes sense, or for knowledge. Like anyone can simply buy a book for just like simple, like you can just look up the pure simple knowledge. It's that wisdom. It's like, how do I translate what I already have in my head to fit best into this new paradigm known as Go or whatever that thing is? Um, like the Rust book gives you everything you need to know about Rust. But where where's that book? I know it's somewhere around here. Huh, huh, huh. Dang it, where did I put it? Um, that's somewhere else. Anyways. Uh, like uh, zero to production with Rust. That's a great book because it shows you, okay, you know how to write Rust. We're not going to talk about if statements and borrow checkers or any of that kind of crap. We're going to show you how do you write a production styled application in Rust. Here's all the steps. Now that could have just been an online set of, uh, you know, tutorials or it could have been a book, right? Like that for me is like a wisdom book. It's like how this is how you build the best possible, most canonical style of something. And I really enjoyed that book. So there's like a difference. It just seems silly to learn how to write an if statement from a book. It just does, especially when you already know how. If you already know how to program, like what are you doing, dog? Just just take one second to Google it. It's called learning Go, an idiomatic approach, something like that. Uh, I recommend it because I think I think when you learn a language, it is really important to learn uh, the idiomatic approach to solving particular problems and stuff like that, right? Besides these, there are there are books about specific topic within a, within a language, like for example, this one, concurrency. I do like that specific topics is pretty cool. Uh, having someone who is really good at a specific topic, I think is really valuable to have them. And if they choose to write down their stuff in um, in a book, like it can be very beneficial. I definitely have some Go books that are just like specific knowledge about a topic. And I like that. Like, I like that a lot. Uh, the problem I have with, like, especially that idiomatic learning Go problem is it mixes learning Go with it. Like, I feel like you could condense that all down to, like, 20 pages, 30 pages, 40 pages of, like, this is how you approach this problem. Here's a problem. Let's walk through how you'd approach it the Go way. And people don't do that. And it, it, it just drives me nuts. I don't want to learn an if statement. I just want to learn how you do that. That's why I typically like topical books like that concurrency one, probably really good. Like here's, here's how you really want to think about concurrency and everything. Like to me, that sounds like a great book. That sounds like a fantastic book to read. Uh, and if you're, by the way, if you're not reading books, um, this is a crazy statement. This is a crazy statement right here. Understanding documentation is better than reading a book. Uh, I don't think you can relate the two at all. Documentation is just the basics, the atomic building blocks. It's the Berkeley sockets of how of how the programming language works. Whereas a book is like, here is what I've learned, here is what I've written, here is how you should approach problems. They're almost exclusively different. And if your documentation 
contains that, it feels a little weird. And if your book contains documentation, probably pretty weird, right? There's different problems. They're like, they're not even, they're not even the same. You're not solving the same thing. You should always read the effing manual, but you should also read books. Books are fantastic ways to learn. There's some really great wisdom in books. Go in, in Go, but what I think the most useful book, like overall for, for any uh, level of experience is a book called 100 Go Mistakes. I literally have that on my nightstand. I'm onto like mistake five. The problem is the first five mistakes are like very generic stuff that apply to all languages. So I was pretty disappointed by that. I wanted to see some Go mistakes. And so I was really excited for Go stuff, like stuff I don't want to oopsie daisy on Go. So I'm going to keep on reading that. And Laps how and to avoid them. <laughs> if you were programming in Java, uh, like I did before mo uh, moving to Go, you are probably familiar with a book called Effective Java. So this by the way, the Java to Go pipeline is real. I, I genuinely think there's going to be this large renaissance. Or I wouldn't call it a renaissance. I think the swell of available Go jobs and growing Go market is only going to get bigger because I think that pipeline going from Java to something else seems really, really natural transition because you want something that's compiled and a lot of people don't want to write Rust or JavaScript, right? Those are like the two other ends, right? You have like Go, you have you have Go and Java in the middle and Rust and JavaScript on the ends. And people don't want to do JavaScript. And some people just don't like Rust. Like that's just the, the, the reality, right? They're just not ready to become a furry yet. And so it's just like Java and Go. They just feel in the same market. Well, C Sharp is like the same thing, right? C Sharp is just Java, right? I put C Sharp and Java in the same. I know they're like very different languages, but I put them in the same category. And so then, then there's like the hop from. Kotlin also falls into the hop from. Right, so Kotlin would also be in like this the Go camp, uh, where they just want to learn something different or something that's that's newer. And so this is basically but, like Effective Java in Go. And if you know, uh, Effective Java is like the book for for Java programmers. The book is written by an author called Tiva Hersani. I hope I didn't didn't butcher the name. And which which at the time of writing the book, I think he was working at Docker, and now he's a senior engineer at Google. I guess having a book in your resume is like good thing, right? The book itself <laughs> is like full of inform information. That That's actually kind of interesting. I, you know, you remember how it, on GitHub there's all these like just hundreds of shit PR so people can say they contributed to open source. Are we about to get the hundreds of shit books? Because having a book on your resume is better to get hired for. And so now here it comes. Here comes the low quality, the low quality book. <laughs> The low quality book tour is about to happen. <laughs> AI generated book. Let's go. It's already happening. That's what we want to talk about. It is really, really nicely presented. Great. And now that is what it. one of the one of the good good things about it, right? It is separated separated in the into into various uh, uh, topics, and within each of those uh, topics, the author mentioned and covered uh, most known mistakes. Uh, nice. that we as Go, Go programmers uh, did or could do in the future. My number one mistake I still make regularly is that maps are initialized to nil. I really wish there was an option type. I really hope that as Go goes on with the generics that they make some sort of option type that also works well with JavaScript so that if it's a nil, it's an option none. Like, I, I'd love that. I, I'd love that just because my number one oopsie-daisy I personally make is is null pointer exceptions right like that's that's my biggest oopsie daisy it's like my my just my great it's, it's a skill issue for sure absolutely all things boil down to a skill issue it's just that some skill issues uh I, i'm just worse at and i can't seem to get better i literally cannot seem to get better no you but you're right don't don't jk don't hey don't, don't whoa, whoa 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 we're not hey we're not that kind of people around here okay when you say something you say it you say it with your chest, okay? You said skill issues, and I agreed with you. You can't come back and JK me now, okay? You lean in. You lean in and be ready. Skill plateau? Yeah, skill issues. You suck. Thank you, okay? You go. You own that shit, okay? Don't, don't, don't be trying to, like, change your opinion around here. We don't do that, okay? You lean in, and you say what you got to say. Now, if I make a great argument for why you're wrong, then maybe you can change your opinion. But you can't just change your opinion because I agree with you, okay? That somehow makes it feel worse. It actually makes you. It actually makes me feel like my opinion is so shitty that when I agreed with you, you realized you were wrong and you went back on it. That 
hurts me physically, okay? Like, you think I like that? You think I want to be in that? I don't think so. That's d ridiculous. Right. Or maybe doing right now. The topics go all the way from, from uh, project organization to, to subjects like goal and concurrency and uh, goal performance and opt optimization. What I like the By the way, I really like what he's saying. I got, I'm going to go through the – how about this one? I will go through the 100 mistakes of Go over the course of the next month. And I will report back and I will do a like response short to this. Sounds good? You guys in for that? Um, cause I can't stream it. I don't know if I'm allowed to stream using the book because you know, you know how it goes. Like someone put a, you know, I don't know if you can really do that, but I've been wanting to go through the book. I'm a couple in, I feel like, I feel like it's time to just go through and just finish it off because everything he said are things that I want to know about. Like what are the common mistakes you make, especially when it comes to concurrency? Cause I, again, I'm not super familiar with go. I want to, uh, I want to jump charge, super charge, ultra charge, turbo charge my go knowledge. And the best way I see is to, you know. To read some of these the primogen book club i've been thinking about doing the primogen book club the problem is is that um some books i start reading and i don't like and if i have to if i have to like you know like commit to one and i don't want to read it anymore well book clubs are good for like two, one to two weeks exactly May, maybe we'll do it maybe maybe someday i'll do that i've never started a patreon but one of the ideas i had was to do effectively like a book club mentoring type patreon where it's just like you guys want to do that I want only committed people because the problem about like book clubs is a lot of people, they, they say they're committed and then they just fall apart and they don't do it at all. And so it's just like if I can – if you put like $5 on the line, all of a sudden you're reading that book and it's like you yeah, – oh, yeah, book club Dune 4, children, the children of God or whatever it's called. It's just like damn. <laughs> Now you got me, right? Five dollars, like, right? It just makes ADHD stops me from reading. That's why money tends to be a really good motivator, right? If you can make people have to pay, Children of Dune, that's what it is. Children of Dune. If you can make people pay, they will just tend to complete things more. So are there any good books about approximators slash neural nets? I'm sure there's plenty. The most is that uh, before going and explaining the mistake itself. Pay for Bible uh, study, shut up. <laughs> the author always gives a really, really good introduction to basic concepts about the subject, right? Ooh, but when I, I like say that. really good, I mean like really, really good. Like uh, it is useful for a beginner programmer in general, but also has meat for a, for a, a experienced developer. Like for example, a section, a section about uh, Go concurrency. So this is a hard topic in general. Okay. But here, the author did an excellent job on explaining like everything from the Go runtime and how Go routines are managed and scheduled, all the way to Go to Go memory model specification itself, right? And if we talk about Go memory model, this is like one of the best explanations uh, about the topic, and I covered bunch of bunch of them. And I uh, okay, okay, good. I, it sounds like this is a sell for me for the book. Yeah, it's a sell for me. It's a sell for you. I think let's get sold on that one because that sounds very, uh, that sounds really good. I like that. Not just that. When you like read about Go concurrency in general, you, you will rarely come across about Go memory model. Like in this whole book on the topic, right? You will not, for some reason, read about, read about Go, memory, uh, Go memory model. And here in this book that mm, talks about a bunch of different things, you will, you will find really good explanation. Uh, Java is less than anything else. Uh, not true. Okay, if you are building enterprise FizzBuds, you would only use Java. Everybody knows that. Like, that's how you enterprise. About the topic. And this just shows you how much there is really good stuff in here. And no, this is not a paid commercial for the book, right? Uh, I simply really like it. It helped me a lot uh, when learning the language and like when when when, when programming uh, in Go like on, on daily basis. It is actually usually on my desk like, like a reference when I stumble upon something. I don't know. I simply highly recommend mm. it and I'm pretty sure you're going to like it as well. Like always, thank you very much for watching. Uh, I really hope. Was that a transition or did his camera just wig out there for a quick second? You liked it. And if you did, maybe give me a thumbs up and maybe consider subscribing. Why not, right? So you don't miss the next video. And until then, bye bye. By the way, this was a, honestly, this was probably, dude, Enel, I'm, first off, I am hitting the subscribe button. I am hitting the thumbs up. You know, 
it, I have not seen someone just give me the effing meat and give it to me raw in a while on YouTube. Like everybody is out there giving me just the slowest roll to get to the meat. And it's just so dang frustrating. You know what I mean? And this was refreshing. It was, it was just the, the introduction was fairly short and it wasn't just like an intro like, hey, uh, you know, my name is. Instead, he like he, he didn't just give us the tip. Okay, we're talking like this was full shaft learning here. I'm very excited about this. Uh, this was fantastic. Very happy about this. I would love to see more of this, right? I want more of this. Huh? Huh? No, Theo, I understand that that exists. What do you think I was referencing? I, I get it. You got quit. Just trust me. I get it. I get things. I For the most part, when I say things, when I say Java Enterprise Fizzbuzz, like – I specifically called out the language and the name of the repo, and you spammed it like six times, Theo. Theo, you made it into this effing video because you kept saying it, Theo. Theo, you said it there, and then back up here, you said it again. You've said it at least three times, Theo. Theo, pick, get your shit together, Theo! A jet.